Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 11. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authority, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 13. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. 14. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. 15. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. 1. Our battle is not physical but spiritual. What are some ways in which we experience spiritual warfare in our lives? 2. The armor of God. Belt of truth. How does truth protect us and keep us grounded in spiritual warfare? Breastplate of righteousness. What is the significance of righteousness in our spiritual battle? Shoes of the gospel of peace. How does the gospel equip us to stand firm? Shield of faith. How does faith protect us from the attacks of the enemy? Helmet of salvation. Discuss the assurance and protection that salvation offers. Sword of the Spirit. What role does the Word of God play in our defense and offense? 3. Prayer and alertness. Explore the importance of prayer in spiritual warfare. How does prayer empower us to face the challenges of spiritual battles? Belt of Truth. How truth protects and keeps us grounded in spiritual warfare. The belt of truth is the first piece of the armor of God mentioned in Ephesians 6.14. It's essential to understand the symbolism behind this piece and how it serves to protect and ground us in the midst of spiritual warfare. Symbolism of the Belt In ancient times, a belt was a crucial part of a soldier's armor. It held the soldier's garments in place and provided a secure foundation for other pieces of armor. Similarly, truth serves as a foundational element in our spiritual armor, providing stability and a solid base upon which we can stand against the enemy's attacks. How Truth Protects Us 1. Protection from Deception Truth acts as a shield against the enemy's lies and deception. In spiritual warfare, the enemy seeks to distort reality, tempting us to believe falsehoods about God, ourselves, and others. Embracing and holding on to the truth of God's word helps us discern lies and protects us from being led astray. 2. Clarity in Decision Making Truth provides clarity in the midst of confusion. When we are faced with difficult decisions or situations, grounding ourselves in God's truth helps us make choices that align with His will and purpose for our lives. 3. Resisting Temptation Jesus demonstrated the power of truth when faced with Satan's temptations in the wilderness. Each time, He responded with the truth of Scripture, showing us that the Word of God is a potent weapon against the enemy's schemes. How Truth Keeps Us Grounded 1. Anchored in God's Word Truth, found in God's Word anchors us in the unchanging character of God. When we study and meditate on scripture, we gain a deep understanding of God's nature, his promises, and his commands. This knowledge keeps us rooted in him, even when circumstances are uncertain. 2. Steadfast identity. The truth of who we are in Christ provides a strong foundation for our identity. When we face attacks that try to diminish our worth or value, we can rely on the truth that we are loved, redeemed, and chosen by God. 3. Unity and Authenticity Truth fosters authentic relationships and unity within the body of believers. When we are honest with one another and live out God's truth, we build genuine connections that are resistant to the enemy's attempts to sow discord. Application 1. Study God's Word. Regularly engage with the Bible to gain a deeper understanding of God's truth. Memorize key verses that can be recalled in times of spiritual warfare. 2. Speak in live truth. Practice honesty and integrity in your words and actions. This not only reflects the character of Christ, but also strengthens your defense against the enemy's attacks. 3. Combat lies with truth. When faced with doubts, fears, or negative thoughts, counter them with the truth of Scripture. Replace lies with God's promises. 4. Stay connected. Maintain fellowship with fellow believers who can encourage you in God's truth and hold you accountable. In conclusion, the belt of truth is an essential part of the whole armor of God. By embracing God's truth, we are protected from the enemy's lies and deception and we remain grounded in our identity as children of God. As we navigate spiritual warfare, let us remember that truth is not just a concept, but a powerful weapon that shields and supports us in the battles we face. Breastplate of Righteousness The Significance of Righteousness in Our Spiritual Battle The Breastplate of Righteousness is another vital component of the armor of God mentioned in Ephesians 6.14. 
Understanding the significance of righteousness in spiritual warfare helps us grasp its role in protecting and empowering us in our battles against the forces of darkness. Symbolism of the Breastplate In ancient armor, the breastplate covered the chest and vital organs, safeguarding the soldier from fatal blows. Similarly, the breastplate of righteousness guards our spiritual heart and character, protecting us from the enemy's attacks that aim to compromise our integrity and relationship with God. The Role of Righteousness 1. Protection from Accusations Satan, also known as the Accuser, seeks to undermine our confidence in God by reminding us of our past sins and shortcomings. When we are clothed in the breastplate of righteousness, we are reminded that through faith in Christ, we have been declared righteous before God. This truth shields us from the enemy's accusations. 2. Maintaining Fellowship with God Righteousness is the state of being in right standing with God. Sin can create separation between us and God, weakening our connection. When we embrace the righteousness of Christ, we're able to maintain a close relationship with Him, which is essential in times of spiritual battle. 3. Defending our character Our character and integrity are critical aspects of our witness as Christian. Wearing the breastplate of righteousness signifies our commitment to living a life characterized by moral integrity, honesty, and ethical behavior. This defense prevents the enemy from tarnishing our reputation and witness. Significance of Righteousness in Spiritual Warfare 1. Confidence in God's Protection When we understand that God's righteousness covers us, we can approach spiritual battles with confidence, knowing that our security is in Him. We don't have to rely on our own strength or goodness, but on the righteousness granted to us through Christ. 2. Steadfastness Against Temptation Righteousness empowers us to resist temptation and sin. As we acknowledge our identity as righteous in Christ, we are less likely to yield to the enemy's temptations that aim to lead us astray. 3. Spiritual Resilience Living in righteousness strengthens our spiritual resilience. When we walk in alignment with God's standards, we are better equipped to bounce back from spiritual attacks and setbacks. Application 1. Receive God's righteousness. Embrace the righteousness that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Understand that it's a gift bestowed upon believers, not something earned by our own efforts. 2. Repentance and forgiveness. Regularly confess sins and seek forgiveness. This helps maintain our spiritual integrity and keeps us in alignment with God's righteousness. 3. Cultivate holiness. Strive to live a life that reflects God's character. Pursue holiness and righteousness through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. 4. Combat lies with truth. Counter the enemy's accusations by reminding yourself of your position as a righteous child of God. In conclusion, the breastplate of righteousness is a crucial part of the armor of God that protects our spiritual heart and character. It reminds us of our identity as recipients of God's righteousness through Christ, empowers us to resist temptation, and enables us to navigate spiritual battles with confidence and integrity. Shoes of the Gospel of Peace How the Gospel Equips Us to Stand Firm the shoes of the gospel of peace are a significant element of the armor of God, as mentioned in Ephesians 6.15. Understanding the symbolism behind these shoes helps us grasp how the gospel empowers us to stand firm in the midst of spiritual warfare. Symbolism of the shoes In ancient times, soldiers wore sturdy footwear to provide stability, mobility, and protection for their feet during battle. Similarly, the shoes of the gospel of peace provide believers with a solid foundation and mobility to effectively navigate the challenges of spiritual warfare. How the Gospel Equips Us to Stand Firm 1. Foundation of Peace The Gospel brings the message of reconciliation and peace between God and humanity through Jesus Christ. This peace serves as a foundational anchor in the midst of spiritual battles. When we understand that we are at peace with God, it gives us a sense of security and confidence in His provision and protection. 2. Stability and Balance Just as shoes provide stability and balance in physical battles, the Gospel provides spiritual stability and balance. In times of uncertainty, the truth of the gospel helps us remain steady and unshaken. 3. Mobility and readiness. Soldiers needed to move quickly and effectively in battle. Similarly, the gospel equips us to be agile in our spiritual journey. It compels us to share the good news, respond to challenges, and extend God's love to others. 4. Diffusing conflict. The gospel promotes reconciliation and peace between individuals. When we carry the message of God's love and forgiveness, it enables us to diffuse conflicts and promote unity, even in the midst of spiritual warfare. How to apply the shoes of the gospel. 1. Embrace God's peace. Ground yourself in the peace that comes from knowing you are reconciled with God through Christ. Let this peace guard your heart and mind in the midst of challenges. 2. Share the gospel. Actively share the message of salvation with others, both through words and actions. As you share the gospel, you're equipping others with the same peace you've received. 
3. Walk in love, walk in love and forgiveness, even when facing opposition. Let the message of the gospel guide your interactions with others. 4. Stay ready, be prepared to respond to challenges and conflicts with the grace and peace that comes from the gospel. Your readiness to face battles reflects your foundation in Christ. Conclusion The shoes of the gospel of peace remind us that the message of reconciliation and the peace of God are essential for our spiritual armor. In the midst of spiritual warfare, the gospel empowers us to stand firm, providing a stable foundation, mobility, and readiness. As you walk in the peace of the gospel, you become a beacon of hope and a source of God's love to a world in need. Shield of Faith – How Faith Protects Us From The Attacks Of The Enemy The shield of faith is a critical component of the armor of God, as mentioned in Ephesians 6.60. Understanding the role of faith as a shield helps us grasp how it protects us from the attacks of the enemy in the spiritual battles we face. Symbolism of the Shield In ancient warfare, a shield was used to block and deflect incoming attacks, such as arrows or blows from weapons. Similarly, the shield of faith acts as a protective barrier against the enemy's assaults on our mind, heart, and spirit. How Faith Protects Us 1. Deflecting Doubt and Lies The enemy often tries to sow doubt and fill our minds with lies that undermine our faith in God's goodness, love, and promises. The shield of faith allows us to deflect these attacks by firmly trusting in God's character and his word. 2. Resisting Temptation Temptation often appeals to our desires and weaknesses. Faith empowers us to resist these temptations by believing that God's ways are better and that his promises are more fulfilling than the temporary pleasures of sin. 3. Overcoming fear. Fear is a common weapon the enemy uses to paralyze us. Faith in God's sovereignty and his care for us helps us overcome fear, enabling us to move forward with courage and confidence. 4. Preserving hope. The shield of faith preserves our hope even in challenging circumstances. When we face trials and hardships, faith reminds us that God is in control and working for our ultimate good. How to apply the shield of faith. 1. Cultivate a strong faith. Nurture your faith through reading and meditating on God's word, spending time in prayer, and seeking a deeper relationship with him. 2. Remember God's promises. Remind yourself of God's promises when facing doubts or challenges. Memorize relevant scripture passages that you can call to mind in times of need. 3. Choose faith over fear. When fear or anxiety arises, consciously choose to trust God's plan and lean on his faithfulness rather than giving in to worry. 4. Pray in faith. Engage in prayers that express your trust in God's power and goodness. Praying in faith strengthens your shield and aligns your heart with his will. Conclusion The shield of faith serves as a protective barrier against the enemy's attacks on our belief, emotions, and decisions. It deflects doubt, resists temptation, overcomes fear, and preserves hope. By cultivating a strong faith grounded in God's word and promise, we can effectively shield ourselves from the assaults of the enemy and stand firm in the battles we face. Helmet of Salvation The Assurance and Protection of Salvation The Helmet of Salvation is a crucial element of the armor of God, as mentioned in Ephesians 6.17. Understanding the significance of this piece helps us grasp the assurance and protection that salvation offers in the midst of spiritual warfare. Symbolism of the Helmet A helmet was an essential part of a soldier's armor, protecting the head, the most vital and vulnerable part of the body. In the same way, the helmet of salvation guards our minds and thoughts, which are susceptible to the enemy's attacks. Assurance of Salvation 1. Eternal Security The helmet of salvation reminds us of the eternal security we have in Christ. Once we are saved, our salvation is secure. This assurance provides a steadfast foundation, regardless of the enemy's attempts to create doubt. 2. Freedom from Condemnation The enemy often seeks to condemn and accuse us of our past sins. The helmet of salvation reminds us that through Jesus, we are forgiven and free from condemnation. It protects our minds from dwelling on guilt and shame. Protection in Spiritual Warfare 1. Guarding our thoughts The battlefield of the mind is where many spiritual battles take place. The helmet of salvation protects our thoughts from being infiltrated by the enemy's lies, doubt, and deception. 2. Sound Judgment When our minds are protected by the assurance of salvation, we can make decisions based on the truth of God's word rather than being swayed by the enemy's distortions. 3. Victorious Mindset The helmet of salvation equips us with a victorious mindset. We approach spiritual battles knowing that we are already conquerors through Christ, which empowers us to face challenges with confidence. Applying the helmet of salvation 1. Know your identity Understand your identity as a saved and redeemed child of God. Internalize the truth that your salvation is based on God's grace and not on your own merits. 2. Renew your mind. Continually renew your mind through the study of scripture and prayer. Replace negative and doubt-inducing thoughts with the truth of God's word. 
3. Confess God's promises. In times of doubt or attack, confess the promises of salvation found in Scripture. Meditate on verses that affirm God's faithfulness and love. 4. Combat lies with truth. Whenever the enemy tries to undermine your assurance of salvation, counter with the truth that you belong to Christ and nothing can separate you from his love. Conclusion The helmet of salvation is a vital piece of the spiritual armor that offers both assurance and protection. It guards our minds against doubt, fear, and condemnation, and equips us with the mindset of victory. By understanding our identity in Christ and consistently renewing our minds with the truth of God's word, we can effectively wear the helmet of salvation and stand strong in the face of spiritual warfare. Sword of the Spirit, the role of the Word of God in our defense and offense. The Sword of the Spirit is a powerful and dynamic element of the armor of God, as mentioned in Ephesians 6:17. Understanding the significance of the Word of God as our spiritual weapon helps us grasp how it serves both in our defense and offense in spiritual warfare. Symbolism of the Sword A sword is a weapon used for both defense and offense. In the same way, the Word of God serves as our spiritual sword equipping us to stand against the enemy's attacks and actively engage in the battle. Role of the Word of God in our defense 1. Spiritual discernment The Word of God helps us discern between truth and deception. It enables us to recognize the enemy's lies and tactics, preventing us from being misled. 2. Counteracting lies Just as a skilled swordsman can parry and deflect attacks, the Word of God enables us to counteract the enemy's lies with the truth. When doubts or falsehoods arise, we can respond with the appropriate scripture that contradicts those lies. 3. Armor Inspection The Word of God allows us to evaluate the condition of our spiritual armor. It helps us recognize areas where we may be vulnerable and need strengthening. Role of the Word of God in our offense 1. Preaching and Teaching The Word of God is a powerful tool for sharing the gospel and teaching others about the truth of God's love and salvation. It pierces hearts and convicts minds, leading people to Christ. 2. Prayer and declarations. Just as a sword can be brandished in battle, the word of God can be wielded in prayer and declarations. Praying scripture empowers our prayers and aligns our petitions with God's will. 3. Spiritual authority. When Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, he responded with the word of God. This demonstrates the authority the word holds over the enemy. Likewise, speaking and praying God's word gives us authority over spiritual forces. Application of the sword of the spirit. 1. Study and memorize. Regularly study and meditate on the Word of God. Memorize key verses that can be readily recalled in times of need. 2. Engage in prayer. Incorporate scripture into your prayers, using it to declare God's promise and align your requests with His will. 3. Combat temptation. When faced with temptation, respond with scripture that addresses the specific temptation. Allow the Word to guide your decisions and actions. 4. Share the Gospel. Use the Word of God to share the Gospel with others. Let it be a powerful tool in leading people to salvation. Conclusion The Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, is a dynamic weapon that serves both in our defense against the enemy's attacks and in our offense as we actively engage in spiritual warfare. By immersing ourselves in Scripture, using it to counter lies and share the Gospel, we effectively wield this powerful sword, allowing God's truth to prevail in every battle we face. Prayer and Alertness The Importance of Prayer in Spiritual Warfare Prayer is a foundational aspect of spiritual warfare, enabling believers to connect with God, seek His guidance, and engage in battles effectively. It's through prayer that we communicate with our Heavenly Father and draw upon His strength and wisdom to face the challenges posed by the forces of darkness. Importance of Prayer in Spiritual Warfare 1. Direct Communication with God Prayer is a direct line of communication with God. In spiritual warfare, it's essential to maintain this connection to receive guidance, discern His will, and receive comfort and assurance. 2. Dependence on God Prayer cultivates an attitude of dependence on God's power rather than relying on our own strength. Recognizing our need for His help humbles us and acknowledges His sovereignty. 3. Spiritual awareness Engaging in regular prayer keeps us spiritually attuned. It helps us sense the movements of the spirit and discern the schemes of the enemy. 4. Strategic Warfare Prayer equips us for strategic warfare. As we bring specific concerns and situations before God, we invite His intervention in precise ways. How Prayer Empowers Us in Spiritual Battles 1. Strength and Weakness In times of weakness or weariness, prayer empowers us with God's strength. When we admit our limitations and ask for His help, His power is made perfect in our weakness. 2. Renewed Mindset Prayer renews our mindset. It shifts our focus from problems to God's solutions, reminding us that He is greater than any challenge we face. 3. Resisting temptation. Prayer empowers us to resist temptation. 
When we bring our struggles before God, we gain the strength to overcome sin and remain aligned with His purpose. 4. Overcoming Fear In the face of fear and anxiety, prayer provides peace and reassurance. It reminds us that God is in control and that He is our refuge and fortress. 5. Unity and Support Prayer unites believers. When we pray together, we stand in solidarity against the enemy's divisive tactics, fostering a sense of community and mutual support. Applying Prayer in Spiritual Warfare 1. Persistent Prayer Develop a habit of persistent and fervent prayer, both individually and corporately. 2. Praying God's Word Incorporate Scripture into your prayers. Declare God's promises and truths as you pray. 3. Intercession Pray for others who may be facing spiritual battles. Lift up their needs and stand in the gap on their behalf. 4. Spiritual Discernment Pray for discernment to recognize the enemy's tactics and strategies. Ask God to reveal hidden schemes and provide wisdom. 5. Thanksgiving and Praise Include gratitude and praise in your prayers. A heart filled with gratitude keeps the focus on God's goodness and strengthens faith. Conclusion Prayer is an indispensable weapon in spiritual warfare, enabling us to tap into God's power, guidance, and protection. Through prayer, we stay alert to the enemy's schemes, receive strength for battles, and align our hearts and minds with God's purposes. As we continually engage in prayer, we find ourselves empowered to face the challenges of spiritual warfare with confidence and victory. Introduction Let's explore the connection between spiritual warfare and finances, emphasizing the spiritual aspects of managing our resources. 1. Understanding Spiritual Warfare Read Ephesians 6.12 For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our battle is not against people but against spiritual forces. It is important to recognize the reality of spiritual warfare in our lives. 2. Money and Spiritual Warfare Read 1 Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. The statement that money itself is not evil, but our love for it can lead to spiritual conflicts and moral compromises is grounded in biblical and moral principles. Let's break it down. 1. Money is a neutral tool. Money is a neutral tool or resource. It's a means of exchange and a measure of value. In itself, money is neither good nor evil. It's simply a tool that can be used for various purposes. 2. The love of money. The Bible warns against the love of money rather than money itself. This is based on 1 Timothy 6.10 which states, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. The emphasis here is on the attachment or obsession with money where it becomes the central focus of one's life. 3. Spiritual Conflicts When we prioritize the pursuit of wealth and possessions above our relationship with God and the well-being of others, it can lead to spiritual conflicts. Our love for money can become an idol, taking the place of God in our lives. This spiritual conflict can create a division in our hearts and lead us away from our faith. 4. Moral Compromises Our love for money can also lead to moral compromises. For example, when the desire for financial gain becomes all-consuming, people may engage in unethical or sinful activities to attain wealth. This can include dishonesty, fraud, exploitation, and neglecting moral principles. 5. Balanced Perspective The balanced perspective, as presented in the Bible, encourages the responsible and ethical use of money while prioritizing a love for God and love for others. This perspective aligns with passages such as Matthew 6.24, where Jesus teaches that we cannot serve both God and money. It emphasizes the need to put God first in our lives and use money as a tool to support our well-being and help others. In summary, money itself is not inherently evil. It's the love of money and the priority we assign to it that can lead to spiritual conflicts and moral compromises. The biblical and moral guidance is to keep our hearts and priorities centered on God and use money responsibly in a way that honors God and benefits others. 3. Stewardship Read Matthew 6 24, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Prioritizing God over wealth and understanding the concept of stewardship are key aspects of living a spiritually balanced and fulfilling life. Here's a discussion of their importance and how they relate to the concept of spiritual warfare. 1. Prioritizing God over wealth A. Spiritual Foundation Prioritizing God over wealth is fundamental to a strong spiritual foundation. It's about recognizing that our ultimate source of security, guidance, and purpose should be God, not material possessions or financial success. D. Guarding against idols In spiritual terms, the love of money can lead to idolatry 
where wealth becomes the primary focus of our lives. The Bible warns against this in Matthew 6:24, where Jesus says, You cannot serve both God and money. Prioritizing God helps guard against making money an idol in our lives. See peace and contentment. By putting God first, we find peace and contentment in our relationship with Him, rather than constantly chasing after wealth. Contentment is a powerful defense against spiritual warfare, because it guards against the discontentment that can lead to moral compromises. The Eternal Perspective Prioritizing God reminds us of the eternal perspective. Wealth and material possessions are temporary, but our relationship with God is eternal. This perspective helps us navigate the challenges of life with a sense of purpose and hope. 2. Stewardship and Spiritual Warfare A. Stewardship defined, stewardship is the responsible management of resources, including time, talents, and finances, as a sacred trust from God. It involves recognizing that everything we have ultimately belongs to God, and we are accountable for how we use these resources. B. Countering Materialism Stewardship counters the materialistic mindset that often characterizes spiritual warfare. The pursuit of wealth at all costs can be a spiritual battle in which greed, envy, and discontentment can erode one's faith. See Integrity and Ethical Living Stewardship calls for ethical living and financial responsibility. When we act as faithful stewards, we avoid engaging in dishonest or unethical financial practices, which can be a form of spiritual warfare as it erodes our moral integrity. Be generosity and spiritual resilience Stewardship encourages generosity and helps build spiritual resilience. Generosity is a powerful spiritual weapon against the love of money and the discontentment it can bring. It fosters a heart focused on helping others and supporting God's work. Be prayerful decision-making. Stewardship also includes seeking God's guidance in financial matters. Engaging in prayerful decision-making about our finances helps us resist the temptation to prioritize wealth over our relationship with God. In conclusion, prioritizing God over wealth and embracing the principles of stewardship are essential in the context of spiritual warfare. They help us guard against the love of money, moral compromises, and materialism. Stewardship encourages a responsible, ethical, and God-centered approach to managing our resources, and it equips us to resist the spiritual battles that can arise from a misplaced love for wealth. 4. Generosity Read 2 Corinthians 9-7 Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. How does giving reflect our trust in God rather than wealth? Generosity plays a significant role in spiritual warfare by reflecting a heart and mindset that prioritizes trust in God over wealth. Here's how generosity is related to spiritual warfare and how it reflects trust in God. 1. Countering Selfishness and Materialism A. Generosity counteracts selfishness. Spiritual warfare often involves battling the selfish desires and attachments to material possessions. Generosity counters selfishness by encouraging a willingness to share and help others in need. B. Combating Materialism Generosity is a powerful weapon against materialism, which is a focus on acquiring wealth and possessions. Materialism can lead to discontentment, envy, and moral compromises. Generosity redirects our focus from material gain to the well-being of others. 2. Reflecting Trust in God A. Faith in God's Provision Generosity reflects trust in God's provision. When we give, we express our belief that God will continue to meet our needs and that we don't need to hoard wealth out of fear or anxiety. Be acting as stewards. Generosity demonstrates a recognition that we are stewards of the resources God has entrusted to us. This trust in God as the ultimate provider allows us to be more open-handed with what we have. See laying up treasures in heaven. Generosity aligns with Jesus' teaching in Matthew 6 19, 21 about laying up treasures in heaven. By giving to those in need, we invest in eternal rewards rather than merely accumulating earthly wealth. 3. Building Spiritual Resilience A. Resisting the love of money, generosity is a countermeasure against the love of money. By giving generously, we actively demonstrate our resistance to making wealth the center of our lives. Be spiritual blessings, the Bible often speaks of the spiritual blessings that come with generosity. Proverbs 11.25 states, A generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Generosity not only reflects trust in God but also invites His blessings and protection in the spiritual battle. 4. Fostering Unity and Love A. Strengthening the Church Generosity within the body of believers fosters unity, love, and support. In spiritual warfare, a united and loving community can provide strength and encouragement in times of trial. Be testimony to others, generosity also serves as a powerful testimony to the world. 
When non-believers witness Christians giving selflessly and sacrificially, it can draw them closer to faith and provide a contrast to the self-centered values often promoted by society. In summary, generosity plays a vital role in spiritual warfare by countering selfishness, materialism, and the love of money. It reflects trust in God's provision, encourages ethical stewardship, builds spiritual resilience, and fosters unity and love within the community of believers. By giving generously, we actively engage in the spiritual battle, aligning our hearts and resources with God's purposes and His kingdom. 5. Trust in God's provision. Read Philippians 4:19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Explore the idea that trust in God's provision can be a powerful defense against financial stress and the spiritual warfare that often accompanies it. The idea that trust in God's provision is a powerful defense against financial stress and the spiritual warfare that often accompanies it is a central theme in Christian teachings. Here's an exploration of this concept. 1. Biblical Foundation Matthew 6 25 34 Trust in God's provision In these verses, Jesus encourages his followers not to worry about their material needs but to seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to them. This passage highlights the importance of trusting God's provision. 2. Financial stress and spiritual warfare Financial stress in a materialistic world In today's materialistic and consumer-driven society, financial stress is pervasive. The pressure to acquire wealth, maintain a certain lifestyle, or keep up with societal expectations can lead to anxiety, worry, and spiritual conflicts. Spiritual warfare in the context of money, the pursuit of wealth can become a form of spiritual warfare when it erodes our faith, distracts us from our spiritual walk, and fosters discontentment, envy, or greed. 3. Trust in God's provision as a defense. Peace and contentment. Trusting in God's provision brings peace and contentment. It reassures us that God is in control and will provide for our needs, which reduces anxiety and stress. Resisting the love of money, trust in God's provision helps us resist the love of money, which is a root cause of spiritual conflicts. When we trust God, we don't have to place our ultimate trust in wealth and possessions. Steadfast faith, believing in God's provision reinforces our faith. It reminds us that God is faithful and that he has promised to take care of his children. This steadfast faith can be a powerful defense against the doubts and fears that often accompany financial stress. Prudent financial decisions. Trusting in God's provision does not mean neglecting financial responsibility. It encourages us to make prudent financial decisions, budget wisely, and plan for the future, all while acknowledging that our ultimate security rests in God. 4. Testimony to others. Inspiration to others. When we trust in God's provision and remain faithful during times of financial stress, we provide an inspiring testimony to others. Our reliance on God can draw people closer to faith as they witness our unwavering trust in Him. 5. Surrender and Dependency. Surrender to God. Trusting in God's provision requires surrendering our anxieties and worries to Him. This act of surrender aligns with spiritual warfare by relinquishing control and placing trust in God's sovereignty. Dependence on God. Financial stress can reveal our dependency on material wealth. Trusting in God's provision shifts our dependency from wealth to God himself, fostering a more profound connection with him. In conclusion, trust in God's provision serves as a powerful defense against financial stress and the spiritual warfare that often accompanies it. It brings peace, strengthens faith, resists the love of money, inspires others, and leads to surrender and dependency on God. By acknowledging that God is our ultimate provider, we navigate financial challenges with a sense of security, purpose, and unwavering trust in Him. 6. Prayer and Spiritual Warfare Read Philippians 4-6-7 Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is of paramount importance in seeking God's guidance and protection in financial matters. Here's an exploration of why prayer is essential in managing our finances according to the Christian faith. 1. Acknowledging God's Sovereignty Submission to God Prayer in financial matters begins with acknowledging God's sovereignty. It's an act of submitting our desires, decisions, and plans to His will. 2. Seeking Guidance Proverbs 3-5-6 These verses advise, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. 
prayer allows us to seek God's guidance and discern His will in our financial decisions. Wisdom and Discernment Financial choices can be complex, and prayer enables us to seek wisdom and discernment. By asking for God's insight, we can make sound financial decisions that align with His plan for our lives. 3. Protection from Temptation The Lord's Prayer In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray, Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. This includes financial temptation. Prayer can help shield us from the lure of unethical financial practices, greed, and materialism. Spiritual Warfare Financial matters can be a battleground for spiritual warfare, where the love of money can lead to moral compromises. Praying for protection from such temptations helps fortify our spiritual defenses. 4. Expressing Gratitude 1 Thessalonians 5.18 This verse reminds us to give thanks in all circumstances. Prayer allows us to express gratitude for the financial blessings we have and keeps us humble by acknowledging that all we have ultimately comes from God. 5. Trust and Surrender Philippians 4-6-7 These verses encourage us to bring our requests to God with thanksgiving. When we pray about our financial concerns, it demonstrates our trust in Him and our willingness to surrender our worries to His care. Peace and uncertainty. Financial matters often bring uncertainty and stress. Through prayer, we find peace in knowing that God is in control and that we can trust Him with our financial future. 6. Financial planning and stewardship. Proactive planning. Prayer doesn't negate the need for proactive financial planning. It complements responsible stewardship by involving God in the process. We can pray for guidance and in budgeting, investing, saving, and charitable giving. 7. Intercession and Support Support for others. We can also pray for the financial well-being of others, supporting friends, family, and those in need. Intercessory prayer is a way to extend God's blessings and provision to others. 8. Strengthening Faith James 1-5-6 These verses speak of asking God for wisdom and faith. Through financial prayer, our faith is strengthened as we recognize that God cares about every aspect of our lives, including our finances. In summary, prayer is a powerful and essential practice in seeking God's guidance and protection in financial matters. It allows us to align our financial decisions with God's will, seek wisdom and discernment, shield ourselves from financial temptations, express gratitude, trust and surrender our concerns to God, engage in responsible stewardship, support others, and strengthen our faith. By including God in our financial journey, we can navigate financial challenges with His guidance and protection. Conclusion Summarize the main points of the study. 1. Spiritual warfare involves unseen forces working against our faith and well-being. 2. The love of money can lead to moral compromises. 3. Stewardship involves prioritizing God over wealth. 4. Generosity reflects our trust in God rather than wealth. 5. Trust in God's provision is a powerful defense against financial stress. 6. Prayer is a vital tool in navigating financial challenges in the context of spiritual warfare. Let's close with a prayer, seeking God's wisdom, guidance, and protection in managing our finances and remaining steadfast in faith amidst the spiritual warfare that may surround us. Heavenly Father, we come before you in gratitude, acknowledging that all we have is a gift from your gracious hand. We seek your presence and wisdom as we navigate the complexities of our financial lives. We recognize the challenges we face, both from the pressures of this world and the spiritual battles that seek to draw us away from you. Lord, grant us the wisdom to make sound financial decisions, choices that align with your will and honor your name. Help us to be good stewards of the resources you've entrusted to us, recognizing that all we possess ultimately belongs to you. We pray for your guidance in the financial matters we face, that we may discern your path and purpose for our lives. Protect us from the temptations of greed, materialism, and unethical practices that can lead us astray. In the midst of spiritual warfare, we seek your protection, Lord. Guard our hearts and minds from the love of money and the discontentment that can threaten our faith. May we remain steadfast in our trust in you, knowing that you are our ultimate provider and our refuge in times of financial stress. We also remember those who are in need, and we ask for your blessings upon them. May we be instruments of your love and generosity, sharing the resources you've given us to help others in their time of need. Lord, grant us the peace that surpasses all understanding, even in the face of financial challenges. Strengthen our faith so that we may be a shining light in the darkness, reflecting your love and grace to those around us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.